Hello, today we are going to discuss the problems based on the DFT properties. This video is an exam point of view video. So here I will be explaining the properties uh, of DFT or discrete Fourier transform. Then we will do problems uh, using these properties. The important properties of DFT are first one is periodicity. The first property is periodicity. Periodicity states that if the input x of n is periodic with a period of capital N, that is x of n is my input. If it is periodic with capital N, then I can write x of n is equal to x of n plus capital N. Then the DFT, the DFT, x of k capital x of k is also periodic that is x of k is equal to x of k plus capital n where n is a period here n is the period so this property is very much useful in doing most of the problems second one is linearity which states that if my input say x3 of n is a linear sum of two uh, sequences say a into x1 of n plus b into x2 of n that is x3 of n is a linear sum of x1 of n and x2 of n then i can write the uh, dft of x3 of n that is the dft of my input sequence is equal to a into x1 of k plus b into x2 of k that is uh, the DFT of that input is the linear sum of the DFTs of the two sequences x1 and x2. This, uh, that is the second property and the thir third property is time reversal. Time reversal states that if the time reversed sequence of my input is say my input is x of n and the time reversed form is x of minus n then the dft of x of n gives x of minus k which again can be written as x of minus k plus n or x of n minus k here again we are using the periodicity property here a period is added that is x of minus k is periodic that is this property states that if x of n is my input and the time reverse form is x of minus n then the dft sorry here it is minus n the dft of x of minus n is x of minus k that is x of minus k plus n or x of n minus k. Here I am used, here I have used the periodicity property. So that is the third property is circular frequency shift. This circular frequency shift states that the DFT of x of n into e raised to j 2 pi l n by capital N is x of k minus l. The DFT of x of n is x of k and DFT of x of n into this is n and the DFT of x of n into e raised to j 2 pi l n by capital N is x of k minus l. Here again we can apply periodicity property that is x of k minus l plus n. So that is the circular frequency shift property. Then the fifth property states that or the fifth property is circular shift of sequence
which states that the DFT of x of n minus m is equal to e raised to minus j 2 pi m k by n into x of k. Here this x x of n minus m denotes the the shifted sequence of x of n. This indicates the shifted sequence of x of n by m points. So this is the shifted sequence or the shifted uh, sequence which is obtained by shifting the original input by m points. So if you are going to take the DFT of that shifted sequence, you will get this term into the DFT of your original input which is x of n. That is the fifth property. Then the sixth property that is complex conjugate property. Complex conjugate. The complex conjugate means if x of n is your input, the complex conjugate is denoted by x star of n. And this property states that the DFT of this complex conjugate x star of n is x star of k. That is the complex conjugate of your original input. Here x of k is the DFT of your original input x of n and x star of k denotes the complex conjugate of that DFT which again can be written as x star of n minus k. So this is complex conjugate property. The seventh property is circular convolution. which states that DFT of x1 of n circular convolution x2 of n is x1 of k into x2 of k. That is if x1 of n and x2 of n are my inputs the circular convolution of 2 and its DFT will be equal to the product of the DFTs of the two input. That is your circular convolution property. Then next one is the multiplication of sequences. Which states that the DFT of x1 of n into x2 of n equal to 1 by n into x1 of k circular convolution x2 of k. That is if you are going to take the product of the two inputs and take the D and take its DFT then it will be equal to the it will be equal to 1 by n times the circular convolution of the two individual DFTs that is x1 of, x1 of k circular convolution x2 of k by n. So these are the, the important properties that DFT hold and these are very much useful in doing problems in examination. Next, will be, next we will discuss some of the problems using these properties. To discuss the problems based on these properties, I am going to read out the question and I will uh, note the important points from the question. Let x of k be a 14 point DFT of a real sequence of length 14. So here the length n is 14. Also it is given that the x of k is a, the DFT of a real sequence. The first 8 samples of x of k is given as x of 0 is 12, x of 1 is minus 1 plus 3j, x of 2 is 3 plus 4j, 
x of 3 is 1 minus 5j x of 4 is minus 2 plus 2j x of 5 is 6 plus 3j x of 6 is minus 2 minus 3j and x of 7 is 10 so in the question it is given that the first eight samples that is 0 to 7 samples is given and it is asked to determine the remaining samples so this is one question question number one so here what are the points given in the question here the n is given or the length n is given here and it is given that the sequence is a real sequence and the first eight samples are given since it is 14 it will be having remaining how many samples 14 minus 8 that is 6 samples it will be having so we have to find the remaining 6 samples that is up to x of 13 you have to find here it is given 7 plus 6 that is x of 13 till x of 13 you have to find so which property of dft we can use here we can use the complex conjugate property so before going into that we have to identify that for a real sequence x of n is equal to x star of n. that is a real sequence means it is not having any imaginary part so the complex conjugate is same as that of the same input that is x of n is equal to x star of n that is I am going to write a real sequence here say 2 plus 0 j this is a real sequence because the imaginary part is 0 so what will be my complex conjugate conjugate is 2 minus 0 j which is same as that of your original input so this is how the complex conjugate of a real sequence will look like so it is clear that for a real sequence x of n is equal to x star of n now how can we apply the property complex conjugate proper property so so next what we have to do we have to find the samples from x of 8 to x of 13 you have to find so x of 8 is we can write as x of 8 is equal to we have to find first x of 8 so before finding it we can write the property here the d and the complex conjugate property states that the dft of x star of n is equal to x star of k so here uh, it is clear that x star of n is equal to x of n so the dft of x in instead of x star of n you can write x of n is equal to x star of k so you can write the dft of x of n as x of k is equal to x star of k which is again equal to x star of n minus k according to the property so we can find x of k by taking x star of n minus k that is x of 8 is equal to x star of n here is 14 14 minus 8 that is x star of 14 minus 8 is 6 we already have x of 6 so if we take the conjugate of x of 6 we will get x of 8 I hope it is clear that is in order to find x of 8 you can take the conjugate of x of 6 where x of 6 is the dft value at point 6 now x of 6 is equal to minus 2 minus 3j so from the equation x of 8 is equal to x star of 6 that is you take the conjugate of this that is minus 2 
plus 3j. So this is your x of 8. Similarly, x of 9 is equal to x star of n minus 9. That is x star of 14 minus 9 which is 14 minus 9 is 5 that is x star of 5 it is. Then what is x of 5? x of 5 is 6 plus 3j. So what is x star of 5? It is 6 minus 3j. Similarly x of 10 is equal to x star of 14 minus 10. This is obtained from x of k equal to x star of n minus k according to the complex conjugate property of DFT here. The value is, sorry, the sequence is a real sequence. So, x of k is equal to x star of k. So, the property will be like this x of k is equal to x star of n minus k and from this property you can write like this that is x of 10 is equal to x star of here n is 14 so 14 minus 10 again 14 minus 10 is 4 that is x star of 4 x of 4 is x of 4 is minus 2 plus 2j so x star of 4 is x star of 4 is minus 2 minus 2j now x of 11 is x star of 14 minus 11 that is x star of 3 that is x of 3 is 1 minus 5j so x star of 3 is 1 plus 5j I'll uh, discuss the question in my description box. Please check the description box for obtaining the question. Next is x of 12. That is x star of 14 minus 12. That is 14 minus 12 is x is 2. That is x star of 2. x of 2 is 3 plus 4j. So x star of 2 is 3 minus 4j. And last we have to find x of 13 which is equal to x star of 14 minus 13 which is 1. That is x star of 1. That is uh, x of 1 is minus 1 plus 3j. So here it becomes minus 1 minus 3j. So these are your remaining points. So this is how you can find uh, the remaining points if the first points of your DFT is given by applying the complex conjugate property which is x of k equal to x star of n minus k. Uh, so the value of x of k will be equal to x star of k if the given sequence is a real sequence. So this is how complex conjugate properties applied.